be like really tough to take as a kid. You know what I mean? When someone points that out to you at that age, you know? Yeah. I was generally referred to by my weight. I remember, um, you know, we were, uh, we were going skiing and getting the equipment to, and they have to, they have to know your weight to adjust the binding. Yeah. So it knows when to release. And the guy doing it was like, where's the 108 pounder. And I think I was oh, wow. like in fourth grade or so. I don't know. Um, that like that's even though our names were on everything and my brother was jason Jeez. like you know everyone was by their name and then there was the 108 pounder um, yeah there was a restaurant you had to, you could pay what you weigh it was like a cheap way to bring your kids and all my friends like one of my friend's mothers took us out and everyone was under a dollar probably under 75 cents i was over a dollar and i was like horrified that yeah. it was costing her that much and it's like it was like 105 you know a dollar five like it's cheap what? but it was like really public every that you get on a scale and you're weighed in front no of way. yeah yeah that was their promotion so, but it's like not so good for the fat kid huh so so just explain that so that's just crazy to me <laughs> so, you, so you pay as you eat yeah it was kids pay what they weigh so the adults pay you know whatever the menu price but kids eat whatever the they eat is wow. like they can get something off a kid's menu and the cost Jeez. is whatever they weigh and like okay. so that place is out of business now but in the 80s like that wasn't a big deal wow yeah my friend i think my heaviest friend was like 77 cents and then i think i might have been 108 still i think it was probably around the same time so like here we go again and it's a giant scale everyone can see and i was like oh my god i was mortified oh i can imagine what a way to put pressure on a youngster wow yeah And, and is that kind of when your anxiety really set in or had it set in like when I was there already. Yeah, yeah. I, and I, I mean, I still had no clue. I had no clue what was going on, but you know, you got free popcorn, like unlimited popcorn with that meal. So I ate whatever I ordered plus probably four or five. Cause I was, you know, I was so upset and not really understanding it. Um, so yeah, comforting, right. You just mm-hmm. shove the popcorn in as much as you can. And what are your yeah. folks, what were your folks saying at that time? Were they like, you know, look, you should probably rein it in a bit or, or were they just still, my mom wasn't. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, she she was trying to be nurturing and kind and, and I think she was sad about it. And so she really, I, I literally have one memory ever of her ever even hinting at it. And it was just sort of like, you know, I'm, I'm sad that this is tough for you. And that was uh-huh. the extent of it. Whereas with my father, it was much more hawkish. Like I, I told him after I lost weight, um, I was 18 and uh, I had said to him, like we were going out for dinner and I was just, I said, I was like, listen, I have to be honest with you. I'm actually really uncomfortable eating in front of you. And he's like, why is that? I was like, cause you're always staring at what I eat. And, and I really, like, I realized like at that point I was thin, I'd lost weight. I was actually really like, I was kind of jacked at the time. I was, I was lifting weights. Like I was in great shape. And uh, so I felt, I think I felt comfortable and safe to bring this up. And uh, you know, I realized like, since I was a little kid, every time I ate in front of him, he's eating like this, like looking over at me hmm. instead of looking hmm. at his plate. And he would, you know, you don't need that. Another role, you know, whatever it was, like wow. he always had a comment for it. And it's not that he was wrong. Uh, the hmm. delivery wasn't great. That wasn't the way to do it. He didn't know any better. And that's, you know, that's what he was raised with. So he thought that's the appropriate thing. And he had all of his fears, you know, medically and, and just from his own experience and how that cost him. But uh, yeah, so when I told him that, he just said, well, that's your problem. Because again, mm-hmm. he, and it, I mean, actually, you know what? As much as I heard at the time, he was spot on. That is a hundred percent my problem. Oh, but that's pretty rough. I did, yeah, I didn't like it. <laughs> so, but but you know, like I, you can almost feel for the guy on some level because he 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 had obviously been hurt being overweight himself, and yeah. he so badly didn't want you to to go through that. That the only way he knew how was to try and control you. Yeah, and. Uh, like I almost kind of get that and he doesn't know any other way than just like constantly like telling you, what are you doing? Oh, another role. Maybe that will work. Maybe if I just tell him one more time, he'll stop eating, you know? Yeah. And he was desperate. And, um, and again, like that's, that's what he knew. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't fault my father whatsoever. I certainly didn't get it at the time, but it was, it was not his. Um, And of course, like, so I say he watched me all the time. I say, you know, yeah, he made those comments. I'm not making that up, but I don't know that he was actually watching me. I certainly felt that way. But, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's like that song, You're So Vain. You probably think the song is about, you're like, <laughs> who knows what he's looking at? What The world is not watching you. The yeah. world's comments are not about you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if I say, wow, what a nice car. It's not, that's not me secretly saying your car is a piece of junk. 
I'm actually like, yes. I'm talking about this one over here, not yours. <laughs> yeah. um, but a lot of us take things that way. Totally. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's no different with my dad and, and I took it that way, but that is on me. And little did I know I was sitting on all this anxiety and all this self judgment. And so his words were really, that just hit me um, yeah. to look back at myself and I wasn't ready for it. Yeah. Well, we, Gareth and I actually have talked about it quite a lot of late. It's just like assumption, isn't it? It's just such a bad thing to have. Like you're almost always wrong about what someone else is thinking. So yeah, don't even try, you know, like yeah. you just literally don't even know. So, and generally it's going to be a negative thought. So it's just a good reminder. So thanks yeah. for that. So in, in, in high school, you actually met a quite a great mentor and, um, he was a yeah. PE teacher who helped you sort of turn things around. Is that right? Yeah, I am. Um, I actually just drove by my high school uh, Saturday and I said to my son, I was like, you know, that's where Mr. Andre works. I owe him my life. And my wife was like, really? I was like, yeah. And probably our sons as well. Um, he just, he took a really different tact about wellness and I'm incredibly close with him to this day. Uh, you know, I, I talk about him in my book, like he's, I really do owe him so much and it's not just my fitness. Uh, he set me, he kicked me into a course in a really kind way that I, like, I just wouldn't be here without that. Um, that's when I started to learn more about myself and started to be willing to do that. So he, it was the first time exercise wasn't, Hey fat kid, what's wrong with you? Why are you wheezing? Why can't you go, you know, all the negative stuff. Why are you eating this? It's like, what do you enjoy doing? And it's like, well, everyone makes me run. And I hate it. My knees hurt. It's like, okay, well, we don't have to. Only has a French accent, so he sounds a lot, <laughs> a lot cooler saying it. But he's like, you don't have to run. He's like, have you ever tried a rowing machine? Have you ever tried an, uh, you know, ellipticals that weren't invented yet, but like a Nordic skier? Like, what? Have you ever lifted weights? And I was like, oh, I'm a boy in high school. I would love to lift weights. That sounds really <laughs> cool. Get get muscles. Um, so he just helped me kind of explore for myself, what I enjoyed. And he built it in a way that like, you'd see wins, he would set you up for how to track it. This is where I learned a lot of the fundamentals of, of physical fitness, like, create some goals, create some methodologies to track your performance, you know, start with a baseline and then then build something that's going to push you, but you can achieve track yourself how you're doing it. And he was so quick to like, he'd pick up your chart and be like, Wow, man, that's incredible. Look how you did this. <laughs> he pointed, like, it doesn't matter what it was. Even if it was like you did poorly, he's like, you know, I noticed you seem to be dragging, but you still did all this. He's like, and I'm sitting here like, oh, man, I only got half of what I thought. He's like, no, look at this. You know, you had a test this morning. Like, he recognized there is a win in every interpretation. And it's not, it doesn't have to be fake. You know, people are like, oh, you failed. Why are you celebrating? It's like, well, okay, maybe you didn't get where you were going, but that doesn't mean you got nowhere. Mm -hmm. Even if you move backwards, did you learn something in the process? Did you recognize, you know what, your body was not ready for that or your mind wasn't ready for that. And what you learned is you do need to step back. And there's value in that because you're not building this life of like extremes. You're trying to build something sustainable. And he planted all of those seeds in a way that I actually felt like I was building the journey myself because I was. And a way that let me explore putting something together I enjoyed. And that's the first time I really realized exercise, you know, everyone jokes about it being like, oh, I got to go to the gym. And like, it's a negative thing for a lot of people. Um, do you honestly expect to keep doing it then? Yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah, like a yeah, job doesn't have to be work in the net. Like, well, it wouldn't be called work if it was enjoyable. Well, maybe it can be. Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. You know, like you can't, there are a gazillion things you can do in the gym or for a career. If you explore, you might find something you genuinely love doing that you want to keep doing. Yeah. Absolutely. That's how you sustain. Exactly. But, yeah. Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour and up in the air. Stop at the toll, digging for change, snowy Cape Fold mountain range. Gotta be quick so 